Good morning and welcome back here to North Dartmoor for our worship online this Sunday the 16th of August. It's good to welcome you in the name of Jesus wherever you join us and whatever you believe. This morning in our readings and our worship we'll be hearing again the story of a remarkable woman, a woman who is a prophet and a mother, a woman who in her way helped to change the world forever. Mary the mother of Jesus, hopefully will shine through all our thinking, our praying and our reading this morning. But for now, as always, we meet in God's presence and we begin with a prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you and the whole community of creation, now and forever. Amen. This morning, as we return to God for his grace and forgiveness, we're using some prayers from the Iona community. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, you are there, and we give you thanks. But where we have not touched but trampled you in creation, where we have not honoured but avoided you in one another, where we have not received but rejected your goodness, forgive us 
and hear our plea for your pardon. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Know that God is good, and that to those who are truly sorry, God forgives what is past, and enables us to begin again. In the beautiful name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in the power of your life-giving Spirit. Amen. I will sing for joy in God, explode in praise from deep in my soul. He dressed me up in a suit of salvation. He outfitted me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom who puts on a tuxedo and a bride a jewelled tiara. For as the earth bursts with spring wildflowers and a garden cascades with blossoms, so the Master, God, brings righteousness into full bloom and puts praise on display before the nations. Let us pray. O faithful one, whose power is shown to us in obedience and vulnerability, we praise you for Mary, whose hospitable yes made a place for love, whose song of transformation makes thrones and rulers tremble, whose prayer is heard because she is one of us. Through Jesus Christ, Mary's child. Amen. This reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 56. Mary's soul. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Well, many a time I sang that as a little cathedral chorister, not really knowing what a remarkable woman that song was all about. And Mary's song, as being one of our readings today, is indeed a reminder that all generations have called her blessed, albeit making her in their own image, as we often do with God. She has many names, Mary, the mother of Jesus. I wonder which ones resonate with you. Maybe Queen of Heaven. Maybe from the Orthodox tradition, Theotokos, God-bearer. Mary of mercies and grace. And surely that was one of the things, one of the words we echo in some of our traditions, where we remember Mary full of grace. For me, the title Stella Maris has always captured my imagination. This aspect of the human response to God, the star of the sea, not just for seafarers and fishermen, but Mary is a guiding star leading us towards Christ. For surely in her life and throughout the New Testament, a record of it, she never seeks the centre of attention. She never seeks the limelight. One thing I love about Mary star of the sea is that like a guiding star she points us the way to Jesus as surely as the pole star points us north. There are also many images of Mary, some spring to mind, some of them you'll see on the screen now. Some of them 
speak powerfully of her grace, her humanity. Some of them, you like me, might struggle with. Personally, I struggle with the idea of a distant, remote, terribly, slightly bored looking Virgin Mary. But the Mary in our story should really and truly be called Mary the Prophet. For surely she stands in a long line of men and women who have spoken prophetically God's truth in a world that frequently doesn't understand. And as someone said, the reason why prophets often speak in the wrong tense, or at least their words are recorded in the wrong tense, is because they see things as God sees them. Mary the prophet speaks of a time when in God's kingdom, truly, the lowly shall be exalted. So this morning, I wonder what it is about that person, Mary, that speaks to you. And my prayer is, is that to each one of us, we might engage with her story afresh and not be weighed down with lots of baggage, be that the excesses of the high medieval era, or be that the excesses of the puritanical era. For surely here we have an example of a very human, fragile and yet passionate commitment to following God's way when she did not know how things would work out. She, like Jesus, follows the call of our Father to live prophetic, spiritually charged lives in and through times of suffering. I wonder which of those images spoke to you. For surely Mary, like Jesus, has been used to serve them the ways of men, the desire for power sometimes, or wealth. And truly, there's a danger of obscuring the humanity, the prophetic nature of this remarkable woman with all the layers of cultural varnish that we, through different generations, have applied. Nadia Boltz Weber wrote, Images of Mary remind us of God's favour. Mary is what it looks like to believe that we already are who God says we are. Mary is what it looks like to believe that we already are who God says we are. She acts even in the unknowing. She loves and raises her child. She puts up with the stigma uh, from the very earliest days. In small rural communities, that was no small thing. Because she acts, trusting just enough in God to know that he will bring about what he's promised to her. The prophet Mary of Nazareth is given to us as inspiration, not someone to obscure the, our, our relationship with God, but someone to model what it might look like for us. But we mustn't let any rose-tinted lens obscure what it is to be a loving parent a mother or father or stepmother, stepfather, to raise a child. And she raised several more, as well as Jesus. Mary showed that commitment, which so many of us try to and frequently fail at. A commitment to love through good times and bad times, to provide, to be obedient, to give even at her own expense. And yet this song is also more than that. It's more than someone who is being blessed by God. It's also symbolic well throughout the Old Testament. It's almost the creed of the Old Testament that God is faithful and God will completely turn the tables on the ways of humanity with all its injustice, with the rich exploiting the poor, which continues today. It worsens today. These words, the Magnificat as we know them, were chanted as a form of protest in the streets by the mothers of the lost people of Argentina during the dictatorship in the 1970s. These words aren't simply poetry for us to enjoy as even song, lovely as that is. These words are words of protest, words of lament for the inequality, which certainly those mothers of the lost in Argentina and other dictatorships they needed to express their grief. They needed to express their faith. And they acted at the risk of their own lives. And many of them may well have disappeared. 
just as under Pinochet and Mugabe and all those other tired dictators the world brings. But these words were a form of protest, because real prophecy and really prophetic lives disrupt as well as comfort us. As a boy and a young man, I was often taken down to London to go and see the National Gallery and various other sites. And there in the National Gallery, I was always taken with this particular image of Mary. And I don't know about for you, perhaps it's the, the clarity, the distinguishment between the, between the dark and the light. Maybe it's the vibrancy of the blue against the purity that the artist is trying to express. And yet also often, we think we know the meaning, but we don't see it as an invitation, a prompt to act. In this case of this picture, it may well be that we simply see somebody who's a good, pious, well-behaved sort of person, terribly religious, a good thing, and yet we fail to act in the same way. It's rather like knowing that what the green light signifies at the traffic lights, but when it turns green, not actually going anywhere. The meaning in Mary's song and Mary's story for us is, I think, today, is that we are to follow. This is the radical claim of the New Testament. This is the good news of Jesus and his followers, that we become God-bearers ourselves, that the Holy Spirit resides in us. And the more that happens, the more we invite that, the more we too are filled with grace and truth. This very wise man, St Gregory of Nyssa, wrote, what was achieved in the body of Mary will happen in the soul of everyone who receives the word, who receives the divine word. This is the good news. This is the action that Mary's song is to prompt us to do. But I love the works of Meister Eckhart as much as I can understand them. And in this translation by Matthew Fox, again, Eckhart is responding to some of the teaching of St Augustine another wise fellow. What good is it to me if Mary gave birth to the Son of God 1400 years ago, Eckhart asks, and I do not give birth to the Son of God in my own person and time and culture. Surely we are all meant to be mothers of God. What good is it if Mary gives birth to the Divine One, the Prince of Peace, all those years ago? If you and I forget that that is also supposed to be taking place in us, in our person, in our time, in our culture. My prayer for you and me today is that perhaps there's an aspect of our lives that God is inviting us to say, yes, your will be done, Father. Maybe there's something, a challenge, an opportunity, a difficult situation, whereby we are afraid, like Mary must have been afraid, to say, yes, I will do it, not knowing what the outcome will be, trusting just enough to follow in the way of Mary, full of grace, star of the sea, who guides us the way of Jesus. We still ourselves now as we come to God in prayer with our hopes, our dreams and our longings. Magnificat, The Mystery of Mary by Kenneth Carvelli from Seasons with the Spirit. Lady, caught in swift surprise, mind spinning, heart willing, grace by this bit spirit in bearing the body of your son. Each day, each hour, help us say yes to God. Lady, lying with your child close to God and man, offering care for the body of your son. Each life, each love, help glorify the Lord. Lady, worrying like us, anticipating loss, searching unknowing in the Father's house, the new temple, new Jerusalem, the body of your son. Each change, each loss, help us to find the Lord. Lady, how sure you ask in confidence of being heard and of his will, sustaining prayer in the body of your son. Each time, each place, help us to seek the Lord. 
Lady, outside the door perplexed, as he fills the hungry with good things, and the rich go away empty, yet not displaced and letting go, and others in the body of your son. Each question, each uncertainty, help us to trust the Lord. Lady, standing by, but no bystander at the cross can feel as you, the piercing in watching and cradling the body of your son. Each hurt, each pain, help us to love the Lord. Lady, living with us your new people in our life, as here and there we catch a glimpse of you in the body of your son. Each joy, each hope, help us to magnify the Lord. Lord, we bring this world, your world, to you, in its splendour and majesty, its hurt and pain. Thank you for all that we have, for the sun and the rain, the earth and the sea, the cities and the countryside, for every being that dwells upon this land. We remember the suffering of so many in our communities, local, national and worldwide, recognising we are all part of the same community of people made in God's image. We specifically think of everyone touched by the train, train derailment in Stonehaven, Aberdeenshire earlier this week. The people of Beirut in the aftermath of the explosion and the devastation it has caused in so many ways. The ongoing conflicts and oppression which no longer make headline news, but from which people are still fleeing. The effect of the coronavirus, both in the short and long term, in our own local communities, across the country, and amongst the poorest and most destitute throughout the world. We remember the young people who have received exam results in recent weeks, and those still waiting, that they can look to the future with hope despite all the uncertainties they may face. We pause to remember those people and situations which are close to our own hearts. Help us to act as God's people on earth, to help fill the hungry with good things, to bring true love to those who need it most. Let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, as we come towards the end of our time together this morning, we've lost loved ones here in our community in recent days. I'd ask you, please keep the family of the late Alan Coombe and also of Kay Dunn in the light of Christ in your prayers, please. May they know God's presence with them, even in their sadness. So good news too, though, that our excellent wedding coordinator, Liz, is out of hospital. Please hold her in the light too for good healing. And again, knowing that God's presence is with her as she recovers from her op. And finally, all our birds, just a couple left of our swifts in the tower, have begun their long journey south to warmer climes. It's been a good breeding season at St Michael's, and we really hope and pray for our little feathered friends as they make such a long and perilous journey with their migration. We'll miss them. But for now, we're going to sing our final hymn. Based on the Magnificat, Tell Out My Soul.
thanks for sharing our worship with us this morning. A final blessing at the beginning of a new week. May the same Spirit of God, which breathed and hovered over the waters of creation, which overshadowed the young Mary, be born again in your life, that this world may truly know the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, today and always. Amen. Peace be with you.